How to Read Your Prostate Cancer Biopsy Report, A Guide for Patients. That's what we're gonna to discuss today. So for men who are diagnosed with prostate cancer, oftentimes you have a PSA checked. This is the blood test. The PSA is elevated, so maybe it's above a four. And your urologist recommends that you have something called a biopsy. Here's an example of a type of biopsy. Uh, here is a, an image of the prostate and an ultrasound probe is inserted in the rectum. The probe has a needle and the needle can go uh, into the prostate. There's also a, a template that can be used. And these, uh, these needles, the cores are then sent for analysis. Um, so this is just one image. Here's another image. This is what a template looks like. Uh, so I often tell patients that it is like the game Battleship, like you don't know exactly where the, the prostate cancer is uh, or the, the battleship is. So you're taking multiple samples across the prostate and you're trying to find out which of them uh, look suspicious. Uh, many men will also have an MRI before their biopsy and they will have an MRI fusion with, uh, with the ultrasound. Uh, so they actually take the MRI, they lay it on top of the ultrasound, and that way they can go after a particular region of interest, uh, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. So from a template like this, uh, here, here's another image of the template on top, and uh, the, the prostate is this organ here. It, it's uh, the size of a walnut, uh, so usually somewhere between 30 and 70 cc's and these uh, uh, long needles are going to the prostate and they're getting a sample and uh, your, your pathology report may have something like this. It'll have like a, the picture of the template and where it was within the prostate and then they're gonna label uh, what was left, what was right, the, the peripheral zone, transitional zone, where maybe it was towards the, the uh, center of it or the, the median or me medial rather and then uh, towards the periphery is the lateral. Um, so all these things will be present on your report. And you eventually will get a report like this. So uh, this has the patient's name, their date of birth, uh, the accession number. This just says that uh, it, it, this is just uh, kind of jargon for, for the pathologist to identify this sample. And it'll say when it was collected. So when was the biopsy done? When did they receive it in the lab? and when was the report generated. And so uh, it'll also say the urologist name, like who ordered this test, who it's gonna be delivered to, and why was it done. So in this case, it's a history of prostate cancer or maybe an elevated PSA. Uh, so just like we were saying uh, a few minutes ago. It'll also say, uh, in some cases, the PSA. So here it is, the PSA is seven, which we said was an elevated PSA is above a four, so this one's above a four. And it'll also say the clinical T stage. And we have a whole separate video on, on staging. And T1C, as you remember, just means that it was, uh, this is detected by PSA alone. Uh, the, the physician did not feel a nodule on the rectal exam. Okay, next part. Uh, this is the, the most important part. So here is the template. Um, usually the template will have something like 12 cores, that's that's uh, pretty uh, common, or, or 12 areas that are being sampled. So this is four by three, like four columns, three rows. The apex is, is at the bottom of the prostate. The base is at the top of the prostate. This is a little bit confusing because you would think like base should be, shouldn't that be at the bottom? But uh, actually it's not. The prostate is like an upside down pyramid or an upside down pear. Um, so if we go back to this image, Here's the, uh, the, the top of the prostate or the base, and then it goes down to the apex. And so if we go back to this image, here's the apex on, on the bottom. L is left, R is right, SV is seminal vesicle. So these are the two little organs that hang off the top, uh, if you remember from the staging video. And then TZ is the transitional zone. And then within each of these areas, what they're telling you is what the result of the biopsy was. Uh, so the areas marked as benign just means no cancer. And then these other areas are the cores that have cancer in them. And one of the things that you'll see is they look like little bars. Um, so what that means is that a percent of each of this, uh, of each one of the cores had some cancer in it. Um, so in this case, 60% of the core had some cancer in it. And then when the pathologist is looking at the core, 
uh, they're, they're being asked, what is the aggressiveness of, a, of the prostate cancer? And this is determined by the Gleason grade or the Gleason grade group. Uh, and there's a few terms that we're gonna review in the upcoming slide. So this one says four plus four equals eight. On this scale, the scale goes from six to 10. So six is the least aggressive, 10 is the most aggressive prostate cancer. And eight through 10 are basically treated the same way. The other cores you'll see, so this one had 25% of the core or 25% of the needle had prostate cancer in it. And the aggressiveness was a three plus three equals six. Um, so this is the least aggressive. Six is the least aggressive that you can get. Um, why do they report three plus three? Well, the, the needles are long and skinny. This is actually an example of one of the needles. And so what they're saying is uh, they're just taking uh, one part of the needle and looking at another part of the needle. And sometimes you'll have a more aggressive prostate cancer in one part of the needle and a less aggressive prostate cancer in a different part of the needle. So what they're reporting is that uh, X percent of the needle had uh, a three and then the other percent had another three. Um, so uh, it's just trying to, to quantify how much of it was the more aggressive part versus the less aggressive part. At the bottom of the port report, you're going to see the final diagnosis. So it's going to say the location that the biopsy was done. So this says adenocarcinoma. Uh, looks like they actually misspelled adenocarcinoma, but don't, don't worry about this. We found this on the internet. Your report should be better. Uh, so here it says Gleason 4 plus 4 equals 8, grade group 4. So this, this grade group 4 is the same thing as Gleason 4 plus 4 equals 8. I'm going to show you in a slide that's coming up. And it's involving 60% of the core, um, so that aligns with what we see here on this uh, picture. And uh, it is the right lateral apex. Okay, so we're looking here on the image. This is the apex, yes. This is the right side, yes. And this is the lateral side. So meaning lateral is towards the periphery on the side of the prostate, the not the medial side, like not towards the, the middle. Okay, so we see here this has prostate cancer and another area, so the right lateral mid also has prostate adenocarcinoma, this one's three plus three equals six, or gray group one. Uh, remember, three plus three equals six is the same thing as gray group one. So that's they're just saying the exact same thing. And uh, there are, here they, they mention three areas uh, where there was prostate cancer. And uh, we, we look at all of the cores that were submitted. So in this case, if there were um, 12 cores that are submitted on this report, it looks like four out of 12 are involved. One of the important things is that you should not double count cores. Um, so if you have a, a biopsy, let's say they do a biopsy in, uh, we'll just pick the, the right lateral apex, and then they do another biopsy there, and it shows prostate cancer there again, uh, you should not double count that. I'll show you why in a second, because it's still of the same area and you would expect to get the same result. The other thing is that you should technically not include the region of interest. Um, I mean, you, you should include it in the, the staging, but you should not include it in the percent of positive cores. Um, and the reason for that is uh, the region of interest is kind of like, we almost, we're almost certain that there's prostate cancer there and we're, we're trying to target it. And so uh, we're, we're going after it. And usually this is based on the MRI fusion that is done. Um, the region of interest is still really important and it still will uh, will be incorporated in the staging and the risk group. Um, but if you're strictly going on the percent of positive cores, um, it's uh, not, uh, it, it shouldn't be used. I'll, I'll show you the caveat of why in just a little bit. So uh, the other rule is that the highest number trumps the lowest numbers. So this says Gleason score four plus four equals eight or grade group four. This is the most aggressive disease. So this is the one that we're gonna use for the staging. And so we're actually, uh, when we write the staging, we're, we're not really gonna mention that there's also a great group one uh, because it's less important. Okay, we talked about these uh, needles. Uh, they are unfortunately unreliable. The Gleason grade groups and the Gleason scores are unreliable. So here I'm just showing you five examples, five different needles. Um, this needle was almost like 95% of it had prostate cancer in it, but it was all three. And so they called it a grade group one. This needle had 60% of it involved, but uh, the majority of it was a three and there was some component that was a four. Uh, these, remember the numbers go one to five and then you add up those numbers. So, um, Cancer, uh, typically like prostate cancer is 
uh, three, four, or five, and so that's what we are adding. So you have some component of three and you have some component of four. And so this is how you get something like a Gleason seven. You have three plus four equals seven. The next core is 10% involvement, and it is a gray group three or four plus three equals seven. So the majority is a four, the minor minority is a three. The next core has 90% of it involved, and it's a gray group three. The majority of it is a four, and the minority is a three. And then the final core, number five on this list, is only 10% involved, but it's all four. And so they call it four plus four equals eight, or gray group four. And so uh, one of the things that you may notice is that this system is a bit imperfect. Um, so we talked about staging in the other video and the risk groups. The first core that you see here would probably put someone into the low risk group. The final core would put them in the high risk group. And then the middle cores would put them into the intermediate risk group. And uh, they may be favorable or unfavorable intermediate risk. That's FIR and URR in this. Uh, now those are not very specific and i would actually argue maybe the fourth core is the worst because it has the most uh four compared to even the fifth core that you see on this list um and maybe the third core is actually less aggressive than the second core but uh nonetheless this is the system that we have right now gleason scores are a bit confusing um so we have known that um, the the old school Gleason scores used to be called three plus three equals six, or three plus four equals seven, four plus three equals seven, etc. Physicians were confused by this, patients were confused, and so uh, it has been changed, and now it's called Gleason Grade Group One, Two, Three, Four, Five. But they're the same thing as six, seven, eight, etc. From a pathologist perspective, when the pathologists, those are the folks who actually look underneath the microscope. Um, when they report this, this is what they're looking for, how uh, differentiated the cells are. Like uh, if the cells start looking a lot more aggressive and they are much uh, more what we call uh, D differentiated or poorly differentiated, um, it uh, is a higher grade group. The grade group will uh, then go into your risk group. So here is the, the prostate cancer guidelines and the risk stratification. We talked about this in the other video. It goes from low risk, intermediate, high to very high. And then depending on your grade group, so this is grade group one, grade group one or two can be intermediate. Um, grade group three would be uh, uh, unfavorable intermediate specifically. And then high risk and very high are usually grade group four or five. Uh, they're, they're treated the same way. So what is the future of the biopsy? Uh, so far, everything we've talked about is a human being looking underneath a microscope at a long and skinny needle. Uh, the needles have a tendency to curve, so they might not always go to the same location. Um, there's gonna be variability. That person might read it differently on different days. And then if they give it to another pathologist, the different pathologist might read it a different way than the, the first person. So um, how do we try to ob objectify uh, objectively read this and maybe use some more advanced techniques. In the guidelines, there are currently two new tests that are uh, supported. One is this gene expression test, and this is a what they call a 22 gene genomic classifier or the decipher score. This is like the, the DNA signature. And then there's AI pathology, and this is basically uh, taking the same pathology and letting the computer figure out, figure out like, does this look aggressive or not? Um, and this is called uh, Multimodal AI, MMAI, or Artera AI is the, uh, the brand name of it. And it, uh, in the guidelines, they, they write these notes that it, is, uh, it can be predictive or prognostic and uh, for something like distant metastasis or prostate cancer specific mortality, meaning that like men actually died from prostate cancer. The, this is some of the data behind the decipher genomic classifier and how it works better than the regular NCCN risk groups and better than uh, pathology alone. So what this figure is trying to show you is that it is combining the NCCN risk groups plus the genomic classifier, and then it's making these new uh, three-tier risk groups uh, and, and the clinical genomic six-tier uh, risk groups. And so uh, 
what the figure on the right, like if you look at this this plot on the right, what it's telling you is that um, the AUC, that's basically like the accuracy for metastasis. So how well does this thing predict metastases? 0 0.5 is a coin flip, so not very good. 1.0 is perfect prediction. And what this is showing you is that the the normal NCCN risk groups, the three risk groups that we have, uh, they're like a 0.65-ish at various time points. And then if you do the three-tier or the six-tier clinical genomic groups, uh, that bumps it up to like 0.7 or 0.8. So it's a lot more predictive. What uh, patients will get is in the mail, they get a report like this with a uh, genomic score. Um, so this, again, is incorporating your DNA signature, uh, the, the uh, signature from the biopsy or the pro prostatectomy. And it's going to give you a score from low to high on this axis over here. So between zero to one. And then on the bottom, it will tell you what is the chance in five years that you develop metastases. In 10 years, what's that chance? What is the chance that you die of prostate cancer? Uh, and then what's the risk of quote unquote adverse pathology? Meaning like what's the chance of uh, the prostate cancer coming out of the prostate gland? Like if you were to have a prostatectomy. Um, so uh, there's, uh, if you have one of these, you can talk to your, your physician more about it. They'll give you a lot more detail. And then the other thing that we were talking about is digitized pathology and AI. So AI is a, a, a big term for many fields these days, it's basically using the computer to read the pathology instead of a human being. So um, there were uh, several trials uh, in radiation oncology that took a lot of the biopsy samples and they took the patient's age and their T stage, the PSA, et cetera. They had a training set and then they uh, had a validation set, meaning that they then try to predict it on the next set of patients. And they were looking at uh, what's the chance of them predicting biochemical failure and uh, distant metastasis, death from prostate cancer, et cetera. And so uh, this test, this MMAI, was uh, able to identify um, distant metastasis benefit from the addition of ADT or, or hormone therapy uh, in addition to the radiation therapy. Um, and they also, uh, the same thing, is able to predict for uh, death from prostate cancer. Um, these tests are relatively new, and perhaps they will be formally integrated into risk groups in the future. Um, and uh, you can talk more to your physician about them if you need these tests. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope that, that it helps you uh, discuss your pathology report with your physician and to get you the care that you need.